So shall we start? Yeah, please you may. Pragar sir, shall we? Pragar sir, can you hear me? Ah yes, yes, no, I am uh, online. Okay sir, shall okay. we proceed sir? Yeah, why not? Please. Yeah. So, Sona, please. Good afternoon all, respected chief guest, moderator, teachers, researchers, and dear fellow students. With immense pleasure, I welcome you all to the final session of the first edition of National Online Lecture Series organized by the Department of Economics, Marthama College, Kerala. The department is very much delighted to be with you all in this occasion. On this final day, we hope the previous days were informative. Now, I invite Dr. Venu Govind, Assistant Professor, to welcome the gathering. Sir, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Good afternoon to all. Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Marchand Raymingham, Moderator of this session, Respected Dr. V. Pragas, sir. Respected Principal, Dr. Vargis Mathis, sir. Head of the department, Professor Reggie Matthew, sir, other dignitaries and academicians who are attending this lecture. Today, we are accompanied here for the third or final lecture in the first edition of our online na national lecture series conducted by the Department of Economics, Marthama College, Tiruvalla. The topic for today's lecture is migration and labor market crisis in India in the pandemic situation. COVID-19 has created an unprecedented upheaval. It is estimated that more than one crore migrant laborers has been displaced and around 12 crore Indians become unemployed in the first two weeks of the lockdown. With such disruption, the growing question is no longer when, but rather if these homebound workers will ever return. Our labor markets are fundamentally altered and must be re-established from scratch. Even though they will operate in a new reality where demand supply dynamics will be vastly different. We cannot rely on the same job locations, same employment models and same labor distributions that existed in the pre-COVID to kickstart the economy. Today, we have an eminent personality to speak about the topic. Dr. Merchant Remingham is a professor in the Center for Study of Social Change and Development, Institute for Social and Economic Change, Bangalore. He is an expert in the field of labor studies, migration studies, human resource development, regional development, etc. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to express my deep appreciation to Dr. Marchand Remingham for honoring us with the keynote address for this lecture. On behalf of the Department of Economics, I welcome you, sir, for this lecture. The moderator of the event respected Dr. V. Praga, sir, Principal, University Institute of Technology, Kainkula. He is the former head of the Department of Economics, B.B. College, Tampa. Pragas sir is a well-wisher of the department. He is a well-known economist and academician. On behalf of the department, I welcome Dr. Pragas sir to moderate this session. Dr. Vargi Smati sir, Principal, Marthama College, Tiruvalla, is a man who supported and supported all of the activities in the department. So I'm very happy and grateful to welcome you, sir, for this lecture. Professor Rajiv Mathieu, the man who behind the success journey of the Department of Economics. I extend a warm welcome to Professor Rajiv Mathieu, sir. I'm very happy to see the presence of Dr. Abraham Jor, sir, and Dr. I.C.K. John, sir, former principals, Marthama College, Tirvala. With all respect, I extend a warm welcome to Dr. Abraham Jor, sir, and Dr. I.C.K. Jones, sir, for this session. Next, 
I extend a hearty welcome to all participants, including all teachers from different colleges, former teachers in our department, faculties from other departments, research scholars, students from our department, students from other departments, and students from other colleges. Welcome you all. Once again, I extend a warm welcome to all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The moderator for today's lecture, Dr. V. Prakash, Principal, University Institute of Technology, Kayankulam, is a closest companion of the department. Being a well-learned scholar in the area of migration studies, we are really honored to have him as the moderator for today's lecture. I invite respected Dr. V. Prakash, sir, to moderate the session. Okay, thank you. Today, I am very happy to be online in this platform to moderate the very important session of the webinar series conducted by the Department of Economics, Arthama College. Uh, we know that the uh, topic today is the migration and the labor market uh, crisis. Uh, amidst the uh, pandemic period. Now the uh, COVID-19 is affecting the country economy in a very, very bad uh, mode of operation. Now almost all sectors in the economy are affected by this pandemic. When we analyze this uh, uh, economic sectors in a uh, separate manner, we can see that uh, the most affected sector is the labor, uh, labor sector. Because uh, apart from the other sectors, this includes, this involves a very, very large uh, segments, different segments, which will be affected by uh, different uh, modes of operation of the COVID management. Now, laborers, while we are looking into the labor market, the supply of labor will be uh, of uh, different uh, manner. Right. Different types of labor will be affected differently. Now, it is the uh, lowest sector, the unorganized, the unskilled, less educated category of the labor market. Generally, we say the uh, uh, casual workers, they will be affected more because as our uh, uh, analysis shows that uh, crores of uh, laborers are unemployed uh, beginning the March and April of this year in India itself. And in our state economy also, lakhs of people, uh, about uh, uh, 25 lakhs, 25 to 30 lakhs migrant workers are here in the casual labor sector. And during this period, for the last seven months, lakhs of people were uh, uh, re-migrating, uh, returning uh, to their own states and etc. As a result, uh, what happened is the standstill of the economy. The most uh, growing sector was uh, construction sector in Kerala. More than 10% growth rate has been marked during the last year. But what is the position now? The construction uh, has been stopped. Uh, there are there are demand for labor now, but uh, because of the non-availability of casual workers in our state, our uh, construction works are not able to uh, move to move forward. Now, compared to these casual workers. Uh, a, a lesser percentage, about 10% uh, of the total workforce becomes the uh, regular uh, and formal workers. I say regular and formal workers are those people who are protected by the social security uh, activities or social security uh, and welfare, uh, uh, welfare activities of the state or the government. So, such as uh, people who are getting pension, uh, who are getting medical allowance, who are getting other uh, leave and uh, uh, facilities, etc. 
So they are uh, less affected comparatively because they have social security and they are getting regular income. But the greater affected people, the, uh, the uh, segment of the labor market is the casual workers sector. So it is in this sector uh, we are very poor in supply. So uh, we cannot predict. I mean, uh, it will not be uh, wiser to uh, predict the uh, outcome of or impact of this COVID uh, uh, pandemic situation on the labor market uh, because uh, we do not know uh, when it will be over and uh, uh, how it can be compensated. The labor days lost is lost forever. The income lost for the lowest category of laborers is lost forever. And when their income decreases, their health increases. And due to this ill health in the uh, long period, uh, their future labor uh, energy will be affected. So it is very difficult to calculate the, the volume of loss to the labor, labor force and the labor market. I think our expert uh, keynote address making, uh, our expert uh, uh, Dr. Marchang Reminga will be considering all these factors in an uh, efficient manner and uh, we will be able to uh, hear a very good uh, speech on this uh, important uh, labor market crisis during this period as well as, as, well as the, the impact of migration and uh, uh, return migration on the crisis. So uh, I invite all of you to listen the talk and uh, uh, over to uh, Dr. Merchan. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for giving me a beautiful time for... Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for this uh, opportunity to, to deliver the lecture on this uh, migration and labor market crisis issues uh, okay. in the contemporary pandemic situation. You know. <clears throat> May I uh, share the slide? May I share a, share the slide? How do I share? Yeah, we can share, sir. It's there, present now. Okay, present now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, present now. Uh, so you just entire keep screen. Open. Uh, no, sir. You can just keep the PowerPoint open uh, in the tab. Yeah, it's and open. Yeah, then press and take present now, and there you'll see a window, option like a window. Yes, which window? Uh, a uh, window? Your yeah, entire screen? Uh, no, the second option, a window. Okay. Uh, in that, okay. if the PowerPoint is open, it will be shown there. Okay. Is, is it coming full? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just wait, sir. Is it coming full? Full no, screen? No, sir. One minute, sir. Yes, we can see the PowerPoint. Is, is it is it a full screen? Yeah. Full can screen. you see a full screen? Yes, but we can't read because of the uh, size of the font is small. I think. Uh, uh, no, no, no. It's. Uh, are you in mobile? Are we using mobile? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is full screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, this is full screen. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, maybe I might not be able to fulfill the expectations of what our chairperson or the moderator has said, but let me try to make an uh, uh, you know analysis and arguments and uh, positioning the um, migration and the labor market crisis in India amidst COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, First of all, uh, let, let me begin by some uh, in, uh, giving some introductions on how I will be uh, like trying to position the uh, uh, arguments and the analysis. That in India, we what we saw is that pre-COVID situation, what we saw was uh, a very increasing rate of migrations across the um, rural, from rural to urban and rural to rural and there are various uh, streams. And which we try to reason it with was the 
uh, social economic development conditions of the origin of migration and the destination of migrations particularly urban areas and the bigger cities and the megapolitan megapolitan cities they attract more uh, migrants than comparing with the smaller urban centers the, the uh, most of the theories most of the concepts which uh, mi migrations uh, theory in particular particular economic mi of uh, migrations that deals with the ways differences ways uh, urban uh, urban and rural earning differences ways prevalence differences but as a whole migrant try to maximize their individual satisfactions and particularly the in their in terms of economic uh, like the earnings and the incomes and also the welfare part and in, to some extent the social wealth, uh, welfare which they gain uh, I mean the particularly after, at the migration destinations through a better environment better uh, secure, secure uh, uh, livelihood secure society so on and so forth now in the context of uh, like I'm talking about the pre-covid uh, migration situations that uh, people tend to migrate to certain selected uh, urban centers and also uh, certain uh, rural centers you know maybe because of the differences in the availability of employment opportunities and particularly in urban centers and the bigger uh, cities what happened is the uh, newer jobs opportunities availability and the higher educational opportunities that attracts the migrants and as we know, we have uh, uh, in in the conventional like the push-pull fa fa factors uh, of, of migration theory. What we what we try to see is that the differences in the opportunity, the differences in the status of uh, development, differences in the availability of infrastructure or some social unrest or political issues, tension, security, so on and so forth. Those are those were the um, I mean the issues. I mean push and pull factors which determines the migration uh, migration phenomena but it is always always not the same phenomenon like the unemployment problem or the employment opportunities in urban areas or unemployment issues in certain uh, areas or reasons but what we see in during this uh, COVID situation COVID-19 pandemic crisis situation is is somewhat disastrous uh, in nature, which is disaster in nature, you know, like um, uh, which affects the entire population, entire environment, and entire uh, livelihood opportunities, and the hardship which is create, being created by the economic closure or the establishment closures and the retrenchments of workforce, which is not very uncommon, uh, not very un uh, not very common in nature. Uh, the, uh, on the migration phenomena, what we see is uh, uh, as a certain change in the ph ph phenomena of migration or pattern or trajectory of migrations is that in the we t t t normally observe or an analyze or studies found studies found that the better opportunities were the attract uh, factors which attracts the migration migrants, but. In this COVID situation, what happened is the livelihood supports of the, uh, I mean, livelihood uh, opportunities have been shattered, have been, uh, you know, hit by uh, the, by this lockdown, by this uh, closures of uh, industries uh, or, uh, or laid, laid out of employment or workforce. So what happened is that people tend to mi migrate back or, re or in other words, return to their origin of migrations, which they assume that the families may support for their welfare support for economic uh, sustenance and livelihood so let's uh, let's see the uh, magnitude of uh, migrations in india way back in 2001 we that uh, records 31 crore uh, population populations of india were migrants and it, it shot up to 40, 45 uh, crore in uh, 2011 that is uh, at the get back Assuming at this growth rate, migration pattern, a uh, migration rate must have, uh, I mean, uh, the volume of migration, the magnitude of migration must have swollen to maybe around 60, 60 or a little more than 60 crore. Uh, what we see, what we notice is that the pattern of migration, the, the nature of migration is 
is that the urban migration is more rapid if we see these growth rate differences between urban destination or, or urban origin the growth rate is much higher than rural des destination and the rural origin for example our uh, migrations which are originating from urban areas is growing at more than 100 percent or whereas originated from migrants originated from rural areas is growing at 36 uh, person so what what we try to what the what we what it gives what it uh, tells is that the job opportunities and wage differences were as per the theories or as per as per man, many studies the job opportunities as well as the wage differentials were one one of I mean couple of the reasons couple of the factors which uh, which drives as well as attracts the migration migrants to a different part of the uh, uh, part of India. So, and uh, one striking f feature is that my migration, e migration in, in Indian migration pattern, the volume of Indian migration, if you see as a whole, it's growing. And also, but uh, if you see specifically ma males and female, uh, di uh, dissecting male and female, then what we found, what we see as per the empirical evidence is that the uh, females uh, dominates, uh, dominates the uh, migrant. That, See if you see the proportion of females uh, percentage to the total migrants in India, um, uh, close to seventy percent is aware uh, where the share of uh, female migrants in India. But what we what we what we see what we, uh, I mean uh, as the reasons for large uh, proportions of females migration is because of uh, rural to rural migrations and particularly for uh, marriage uh, ma marriage. I think that 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 explains maybe uh, that maybe more of in, inter inter district or inter uh, inter, inter uh, village migrations. So certain uh, I mean if if we dissect in, inter district and intra-district and maybe more of intra-district than inter-district or uh, more of intra-state than inter-state the pattern of migrations may be evident and what we see what uh, what the migrants populations which we which we see why why, why uh, because of because of a uh, large share a large chunk of females and migrants the sex ratio is also very predominant I mean very high that means uh, out of, uh, I mean, for for every two migrants, uh, for every uh, uh, the, you know, uh, two um, um, one mi male migrant, there are two female migrants. Uh, if we see the figure, so what we see is that the uh, mobility of females is uh, comparatively very high. And let's let's see a uh, little more of my migration rate. What the as per empirical evidence, what pre-COVID situations, the migration rate was growing. Yes, I, I was saying in absolute terms, it was growing 31 crore to 45 crore in two decades time, in the two decades uh, decadal time, you know, uh, the period. So what we see is that the uh, proportions of migrants to the total population has also swollen, or has also increased by a seven percentage point. So uh, over a period of uh, well, t t 10 years, that is uh, from 2001 to 2011. So, <clears throat> The mobility of populations, the increase in the mobility of uh, populations has various factors, which is caused by various factors like the improvement in the transportation connectivity, labor market, access to the labor market information, and and sort of, and and uh, yeah, incidentally, and uh, the factor which uh, we normally uh, or the dissociate is the gen migration gen migration is increasingly you know associating with the nature of migration pattern of migrations in india and the the income the in increase in the income is affecting the migrants population the theory says that educational growth as well as income growth is affecting i mean positive has a positive correlations or, or related with the migration pattern migration rate so with the increase in the per capita income as well as national income, the tendency to migrate is also enhancing. And um, and what we see is that urban migration is increasing and is visibly visibly high comparing with the rural mi migrations. About half of the urban populations are migrant populations in uh, in India. So one major factor is the differences in the uh, in the in the uh, urban urban and rural ways.
And of course, the migration uh, rate of migration has increased for both genders, both male and females. If we see the origin of from where they are migrating, that means uh, what we see from the if it, uh, census data empirically is that most most of the migrants originated from the rural areas. Every three migrants uh, in every four uh, originated from the rural uh, rural uh, rural area. It has a great implications for the reverse migrant, for the uh, current senior, considering the current current scenario. That is, um, migrants since uh, since uh, since three fourth of the migrants are from the uh, from the rural areas. Re migrants returning back to the to the to the origin of migrations will also be proportionately much higher than the uh, comparing with the origin of migrations of uh, urban areas. That means most of the migrants may be returning from uh, to the rural areas. And uh, conversely, the uh, mobility substantially increased for urban people. Yeah, this is one, I mean, if you see the changes, like from 2001 to 2011, if, uh, from 18% to 25%, it has changed by around uh, the 7 percentage point. It has increased in urban mobility. That is associated with the forward migrants, the migration patterns. And considering the, uh, the different uh, streams of migration pattern, what we see, what we could notice is that uh, uh, that uh, rural, rural mi I mean, migration towards the rural areas is gradually declining at the cost of uh, increasing ur uh, migration towards the urban areas. The rate of uh, increase of urban to urban migration is significant uh, if you compare with the rural to uh, rural areas. I mean, uh, you know, uh, a decline. Uh, particularly, the urban migrations uh, migration is uh, studies. Various studies have uh, concluded that affluence, uh, the, those who are in the higher income groups and the educated class, are more migrating towards the. Uh, uh, I mean, the pattern of migration from ur urban areas towards the urban uh, areas means urban to urban migrations. So, what what we notice, what we see is. Uh, why people are migrating more? Or, uh, I mean, why increasingly urban, urban, urban to urban migration is uh, taking place? Is as the conventional theory, theory uh, economics theory of migration, which talks about the wage differentials, I think is still uh, uh, is still valid. It's considering the you know considering uh, the uh, wage difference, uh, differences, which attracts the migrants towards particularly to the urban areas. Let me bring in just, uh, how much waste differences are there in India, where was there in India. As we know that the rapid urban migrations uh, were, you know, um, were because of the higher prevalence of waste in the urban areas comparing with the rural counterpart. And another factor is the uh, um, higher prevalence of the rural waste uh, workers in urban areas than the rural areas, but what we see is that the the uh, the there is a slight sign. I mean, there is a sign of uh, improvement in the uh, uh, salaried employees, salaried workers, even in the rural areas, even if it is much higher in the urban areas because of the nature of uh, works work differences in urban areas. More more of the works is uh, are about for, for, like the formal. Uh, employment, non-agriculture employment, which uh, which is unlike uh, in the rural areas, like the um, informal sectors, uh, uh, predominant informal sector uh, employment. So, the NSSO gives for the working age group that the daily earning, their daily income of the uh, of the regular wage uh, workers was much higher in urban areas at four 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 hundred forty nine rupees in comparison with the rural areas which is 299 which is in our which says uh, which implies that uh, in urban areas waste is more by more than 150 rupees so what what is what, what, uh, the man the nature of migration the drivers of migrations or the attractions for migration is uh, one uh, one major factor is the waste differences and prevalence of higher waste in the urban areas urban centers and increasingly, if we see the uh, yeah, if we see the uh, regular salaried employment income, it's increasing over a, over the years. You know, it's consistently increasing. And 
it is interesting to see that the uh, irrespective of, uh, see that irrespective of educational level the daily wage which uh, uh, income was higher in uh, even in urban areas for example the, uh, l uh, let's see that uh, daily wage of the rural oh, sorry uh, regular wage em uh, and the salaried employees of the graduates and above qualification uh, uh, qualified peoples were earning 48 percent more than the rural uh, rural counterpart people Why people are migrating? Uh, people, as we as we are trying to uh, discuss more on the uh, labor migration is issue, why people are migrating is uh, uh, certain things which we uh, would like to know. And the crisis, the employment crisis, the labor crisis, the unemployment crisis, which is in uh, which is currently you know uh, India is facing. Um, the people, the people who migrated for. To the to different centers, to different rural and urban centers or areas, what we see is that, uh, as a whole, as a whole, the migrations for uh, for uh, employment for employment has slightly increased. This increase is, and what we see in detail about rural to rural migration, urban to rural migration, rural to urban, and urban to urban migration. If you see that, if the share of uh, uh, migrations for employment has declined. This, but what we should not hear is that for the total, for the total to total, I mean, for the combined areas to the combined total area migration of origin to the uh, destinations, the uh, this, uh, the figure, the since the figure includes, uh, since the figure includes my in, uh, includes the migrant migrants which were uncla unclassified fight as rural and urban areas, which includes in the total figure. That's make a slightest increase, insignificant increase in the total migration for employment. But if you segregate, uh, I mean, if you specifically see different uh, streams of migration, rural to rural, rural to urban, urban to rural, and urban to urban, we see, we notice that the, uh, during uh, the 2001 to 2011, uh, as per the latest uh, uh, migration information, which shows that there was a decline in all the pet, uh, streams of migration pattern. This, this changes in the uh, phenomenon pattern of migrations or trajectory of migrations, maybe because of uh, the differences, again, uh, the in rural areas improvement or, uh, or availability of employment op opportunities at origin. The shrink, uh, the, the maybe shrinking job opportunities at the destination or inability to obtain certain job expected, uh, ex expected by certain labor force. And Females' mobility of uh, mobility for la employment has increased. You know, this is one striking features which uh, which we notice from the census data that perhaps the feminization yeah, to, to, uh, late 90s and to the 2000s during the liberalization, uh, globalization. You know, I mean, a peak of those era. The Economists uh, or the social scientists, what the, which they discover was feminizations of work, work force is taking place. Like likewise, uh, perhaps uh, the demand for labor, uh, female labor in the in the labor market was increasing uh, in a gradual manner. Perhaps that could be one of the reasons why the female mobility for employment was increasing. And also the change in the nature of job search and the flexibility uh, in choosing the their job and aspirations for uh, employment. I think those features may be uh, explaining feature, explaining and uh, the nature of migrations for females, particularly for employment. So let's see whether uh, whether migra whether migration really cre creates a, a crisis. Whether it, whether it creates a problem, uh, pre-COVID situation, what we see is that migration was not a, uh, not a, 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 not sort of a problem, but during pan pandemic crisis, because of the uh, retrenchments of work, job loss, and so on and so forth, that uh, the pandemic situation appears to have caused the uh, migration as a problem or a, or a crisis. What what we see uh, at current situations, current pandemic situation, is the the the, the 
uh, the pandemic as itself is a disaster to the nature as well as the environment of people, which is affecting the migration phenomenon. And it it has force. It has uh, it has induced to uh, to uh, act like a forced migration phenomenon. It has created a forced migration situations, uh, like uh, by re uh, through reverse migration. But but. Is uh, this reverse migrations a crisis? I, I, I think um, it, it depends on how people, how the government tackles, how how the society tackles the reverse migration crisis. Like if there is a stringent migration policy or a proper migration policy, which may take care of the migrants so for, for the reverse migrants or even the outward migrants, uh, the forward migrants or uh, any type of migrants. You know, I, I believe that. Uh, the the lack of the measures and the solutions has created reverse migration a crisis during this recent i mean this uh, covid pandemic situation time and in comparison with that if you see the pre covid situation the dem demand uh, the, the, the labor migration was more of demand driven uh, the, uh, phenomenon and in such situations, people have a lot of questions that whether my migrants are aware of taking away their job, lock, the jobs of the locals. That was that was happening in many cases, like in Maharashtra, MP, UP, uh, uh, so on and so forth. So, I, 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 this depends on the, uh, the depend the crisis whether it is a crisis migration is a crisis or not depends on how people considers and take uh, uh, understands the nature and the situations of the migration phenomena. But what we see is that uh, what you see in the West, uh, in the labor market, is uh, that normally migrants tend to, uh, I, I, to some extent, push down the way, wage, which uh, which is believed by many uh, social scientists that um, because uh, because my migrants uh, because migrants do accept the uh, lower wage in comparison slightly lower ways in comparison with the we uh, with the local lo local order and migrants so of course the, uh, the this is happening because uh, for migrants the opportunity cost of uh, is higher because they can't afford to uh, you know waste time they can't afford to um, i mean uh, live in leisure and in the pandemic time what well the migrations whether actually whether really a pandemic has created a migration crisis i we as uh, in the beginning uh, uh, our you know guest uh, host has said that you know more than one crore uh, that that is uh, as per the ministry, ministry of uh, labor that more than one crore of migrants have returned to their homesteads i think this this is one concern uh, uh, one concern that uh, that uh, as a policy, as a, as a, uh, the I mean the situation which is uh, creating some sort of problem, you know, the, that if people, a large chunk of uh, migrants were returning home, there I think there there is a crisis, there is a migration crisis, which which is particularly because of the lack of measures, which we, can, we know, and eventually uh, the, the during the lockdown period we see that there was a, a steep uh, rise in the migrants returning. To homestead, and uh, in such situation, in such situation, the <clears throat> there may arise a labor shortage because yeah, yeah, because of the returns of migration of some specific maybe in the uh, maybe in the uh, hotel industry or uh, hospitality industry or even in the BPO sectors. Uh, so, the concern is: does uh, reverse migration push up the waste rate? Wh whether the waste rate remains the same, or whether it must have increased. There is a possibility that, in certain sector, uh, I mean, employment sector, waste must have shot up, and in certain, uh, even if for the daily uh, employment sector, daily wage uh, wages among the daily wages or casual workers, waste might must have remained. I mean. Uh, same or uh, maybe a sort of um, perhaps because to uh, in order to attract the my uh, workers in order to engage in the employment of uh, employment uh, which is offered by the industries so 
going to the labor or going to the you know like the trying to link with the uh, labor uh, whether migration is also really affecting or reverse migration is affecting or what the situations of labor market putting clubbing i mean uh blending it together let, let me just bring in some uh concerns that labor market whether there is a labor market crisis of course we see certain uh from the demand side as well as from the supply side where there are certain uh, you know flows certain you know, uh, certain certain uh conditions which are not uh, induce, inducive uh, conducive to the uh, to the present indian economic condition see employ, employment uh, we, we know that uh, employment growth is slowing down because of uh, as i have said earlier that because of lockdown because of uh, uh, closures of industries uh, business establishments and so forth and be, people people migrants or people cannot cannot uh, remain unemployed uh, remain uh, jobless they have to enter into the labor market to search uh, to secure their livelihoods because of that that in from the labor supply side the employment the unemployment <clears throat> unemployment rate has increased unemployment rate shore up and, um, and the high prevalence of unemployment this is particularly because of the of, uh, i mean recent job loss who tend to find a new job to secure their economic hardship or to uh, you know uh, sustain their life and yes in this pandemic situation what we see is that they are as i said you know they are forced uh, migrants were forced to return to their uh, origin of migration so because because of joblessness because of uh, after losing job uh, they render uh, they remain uh, you know yeah, they face economic hardship they can't sustain their livelihood people tend to move back to their origin of migrations so i think that is forcibly happening because of the disaster the pandemic uh, which is induced by the pandemic <clears throat> and the migrants normally as per re recent uh, uh, you know, you know, i mean some studies in the newspaper clippings i have come across saying that the force my uh, i mean these returned migrants are mostly engaging in a farm work, farm job and or that is mostly informal job perhaps because the immediate unavailability of uh, job to sustain to secure their economic immediate needs is uh, and uh, i mean uh, is the need of the hour therefore their their immediate concern is to engage in uh, any job irrespective of uh, the nature of job particularly in the informal job farm sector and in certain case uh, they this as uh, they, this has comp this must have compromised their uh, uh, reservation ways they must have accepted the lower ways by uh, um, by after uh, a reverse migrant who were who was working in the skilled labor for as a skilled labor for example coming back going back and returning to the origin of migration engaging in a farm work will definitely be earning lower wage rate that is what i want to say and <clears throat> yeah the pandemic situation the pandemic the pandemic conditions have uh, really uh, slowed down the economic activities and uh, economic growth as we as we has, have noticed that india's gdp in the first quarter of 2020-21 was growing in negative at around 24% so what what we that means it has immense impact effect on the labor market too that employment is was shrinking business has here a business is shrinking that um, and uh, the demand for goods and services uh, has uh, dropped and of course the, the people have a pro i mean employers has a provisions industry has a provisions to work from home but the the this work from home is yeah not not everybody can work from home the particularly the larger informal sector workers who are in the, the as working as a daily worker or the casual workers uh, or in the agriculture sector they can't work from home so it's practical that it's uh, it's yeah, impl uh, explicit that uh, that it is for a specific sec sector of the employment uh, of employment light in the in, in information and technology sector or service sector the the loss of job the loss of job because of the business closure and the retrenchments of workers because of the partial operations of their their businesses this has this has in fact affected the employment situations and labor market in india 
But <clears throat> this has consequently, uh, the consequences of this uh, uh, drop in the employment, shrinking in the employment sector, uh, employment and uh, uh, rise in the, you know, uh, like job loss and all. This has uh, lots of consequences. Like it has, it has like uh, particularly this affecting to the uh, particular vulnerable groups like the daily wagers and uh, the migrants' livelihood uh, conditions. It is affecting and uh, those who have lost their jobs are, you know, they cannot uh, remain as uh, as I earlier said. They cannot remain uh, idle. So has to seek job because of that. Uh, the unemployment rate has also shot up. And what we see during uh, uh, the, um, during this pandemic situations, uh, as as per the National Crime Bu uh, Records Bu Bureau, you know the the, uh, the daily wage of suicide rate has increased uh, immensely from 12% in 2014 to 24%, 23% in 2019. Perhaps during this pandemic situations, the suicide rate must have also increased, which uh, particularly the daily wages who, who, whose income is, um, now, I mean, uh, uh, com comparatively relatively low in comparison with the uh, other salaried employee. So there is a possibility that the most vulnerable, vulnerable worker groups uh, like the daily wagers, the uh, as a consequence, the suicide rate must have also increased. I think the government, uh, I mean, the government has to interfere, government has to intervene in, in uh, securing the lives of the vulnerable groups like uh, construction workers or daily workers or casual workers. And as I've said, that in the uh, the the level of unemployment uh, has this is bound to increase the level of unemployment has is bound to increase because because uh, the, those who have lost their job and those who could not get back their job because of the business closure because of the lockdown they are they are supposed or they are bound to uh, enter re-enter in the labor market labor market because of that the unemployment level has uh, uh, shot up but in uh, what we uh, I, I mean so certain in certain section of society i mean uh, migrants uh, or the labor uh, labor market you know a portion of labor labor supply which they also have certain reservations uh, to supply the labor because of uh, health risks because if this pandemic situation pandemic uh, uh, disease condition uh, has uh, you know certain uh, certain uh, uh, influences uh, to the to uh, to the aged people, to the younger populations, to the, the uh, to those persons who have uh, pre, yeah, yeah, I mean, health uh, issues. Yeah. So all the all all workers are not equally, I mean, not not all who have rendered jobless are not re-entering the labor market. Let's. Do I have some time? Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah I, I think I still have some time, is it? Yes, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah, let, let me go, let me go further uh, to the <clears throat> situation of our Indian labor market uh, pre-COVID pre situation. What we see is that labor force, uh, labor force participation rate and the worker workforce participation rate was declining. But this, uh, this uh, NSSO figures and the, uh, this, uh, um, periodic labor force survey figures gives uh, shows that. But for comparison, we need to see the uh, definition. We need to see the definition. It's not 100% uh, comparable, so, but still, at large, it is uh, comparable. I mean, we see, we can see the trend that uh, the labor force participation rate and the workforce participation rate has declined. The decline is uh, more significant in rural areas and for rural females. This labor force participation rate decline is, uh, if, is, is associated with the decline in the uh, workforce participation rate and the employment growth in India. And yes, the WPR, uh, even the census data and the NSS data as well, and I mean the employment and employment survey data as well as periodic labor force survey data, that those all shows that the workforce participation rate was higher for the rural areas than urban areas. 
this is uh, specifically to do with the nature of employment availability and unemployment issues in the urban and rural areas. And yes, rural, rural workforce participation rate for females is also higher for, uh, for uh, than in comparison with the urban female workforce participation rate. Again, to do with certain uh, uh, nature of job availability, flexibility in choosing the job, and the urban uh, and some social obligations which uh, urban people uh, faces, you know, urban people faces. And yes, uh, the <clears throat> workforce participation rate, if we compare in in both rural and urban areas, was Normally, it was it, it always uh, remained higher for males uh, than comparing with the females. This is to do with Indian social system, social I mean social what do you call this uh, uh, family family patriarchal systems, you know, which determines that the source of income uh, is mostly driven I, I mean generated by the male uh, male of the households or the family head, certain thing like that, and. Another factor which is very striking is that the large shares of the females were, I mean, are used to attend for the household duties. That means activities, they are, they are performing activities, but they are attending the household duties, but and all are unpaid, uh, unpaid uh, labor. So, so this, these, are, these are major striking features which for having higher uh, working, uh, I mean, lower uh, labor force, oh, sorry, workforce participation rate for females than in comparison with the uh, males in both the urban and rural areas. This is the figures for uh, work, workforce participation rate. Why uh, why uh, the workforce participation rate or the labor force participation rate is much, much lower for males, sorry, for females than uh, for males. It shows that, <clears throat> uh, Couple of points which uh, I can read out that females mostly perform the household activities. That uh, that is that that is the cause for the females lower uh, lower workforce participation rate. And among the non-workers, uh, the among the one non-workers who are in the working age group that is 15 to 59 years of age, their participation as household duties work is more because. In order to, this is owing to the obligations, uh, family ob obligations, societal obligations uh, in the household. See, let us see whether uh, the employment crisis. Uh, ready, we do do we really face employment crisis in this pandemic situation? So I think we, we can let stress back a little. I mean, the uh, let let us retrospect uh, so the employment figure, which is given by uh, both uh, employment and unemployment survey as well as periodic labor force survey. That in India, way back in 2017-18, we had uh, for around 47. Uh, 47 crore as a worker. That has not changed much from 2011-12. That means you, India was growing with a jobless growth that, that everybody was talking about. Know, that, and in this situation, uh, what we see during this period, what we see is that the uh, job growth, job growth is negative for self-employed, uh, self-employed, the uh, the casual laborers. Casual laborers who are very vulnerable in comparison with the salaried employee. See, their job was, uh, I mean, contracting in comparison with the uh, regular salaried workers. In overall, we saw, during this 2011, 12, and 17, 18, what we saw was the overall employment was, gro I mean, had a contra has, had contracted uh, at uh, minus 0.4, but. The only thing which uh, which expands in the job growth was the, uh, the sector was the regular wage and salaried employ uh, employment. It expanded by uh, around 2.6 crore. That is approximately growing at 20, uh, 30 percent during this uh, 2012 and 18 time period. <clears throat> Yes, the share of employment. If you, uh, if you see that only twenty four percent are the uh, are the regular wage and uh, salaried workers, the and the, the 
the share of this uh, casual labor is also the same as uh, around 24 percent in comparison with the uh, comparison with the uh, regular wage and the salaried worker this this shows that majority of the people are working in the informal sector and now an unorganized sector this and the next slide which gives the detail of like the, the employment growth in term, in millions as per the cmi report this if you see this uh, this pandemic period uh, from april the the one which uh, which is uh, which is uh, which is uh, which has a steep steep slope from april 20 to 20, uh, 21 the the employment in uh, the total salary employment was uh, approximately 86 million that is uh, about 8.6 crore in 2019-20 but it it contracted it uh, fall down to 65 million by around 25 uh, sorry by about 2.1 2, 2 crore um, um employment that means lots of salaried employment worker has contracted and uh, this is uh, this is um, this is very uh, particularly this is happening during this uh, conduct upon pandemic sorry pandemic uh, covid pandemic situation and the biggest job loss which we see is in the salaried employment uh, now that is what the cmi re report has given the biggest job loss was in the uh, salaried employment and those were also in the group of the white collar professionals and other uh, workers including the engineers physicians teachers and so on and so forth but surprisingly the cmi have reported that uh, <clears throat> job job loss among the among the clerical among the lower skill workers were lesser in comparison with the uh, with with the with the white collar professionals or workers perhaps because of the differences in the salary because of the uh, because uh, of the differences in a difficulty in the in difficulty to maintain the employees by the employers i think those features may explain why the white collar professionals are more losing jobs in these uh, pandemic times we are we are not talking about i'm not talking about the uh, the uh, the uh, um, uh, informal sector uh, like the unorganized sector you know <clears throat> so wh what do what do we see from why uh, from this situation why there is a job loss why there is a job loss? There could be uh, certain features which may explain. In India, what we see from this, uh, uh, this, uh, you know, this uh, NSSO figure is that this is from the NSSO. In fact, I have taken from uh, economic survey. So, uh, the NSSO figure has given that that in India, majority of the employees, employee workers, are engaged as an informal workers and. Among the unorganized, almost 10 percent, almost 99.6 uh, percent, uh, 99.6, 99.7 .6, percent uh, of people, I mean, workers are engaging in the informal sector among the unorganized uh, sector. In even in the organized sector, it is it, it is alarming. Uh, it is increasing. Informal uh, employment is increasing. I think this is one of the factors which we should uh, look in more details about why people are losing job. As uh, in the earlier slide, which I said that uh, the white white collar professionals they are losing more jobs. Why is it so? Perhaps uh, there are certain loopholes which uh, need to be corrected by the policy uh, and the government through the government intervention. See, in India as a whole, the, around 92% of the workers are engaged in the informal sector. So employment in the organized sector has increased. Uh, if you see the trend between uh, 2004 to five, uh, four and five to 2011, but at the same time, informalization of employment has also increased. So why this informalization is taking place? Why the informal sector employment is growing more than the of, of formal sector employment? Perhaps this is to do with certain uh, so certain uh, uh, sort of like contract uh, contract agreements, so certain uh, to abide uh, abiding certain uh, labor rules, labor laws. I think those may be affecting this informalization of uh, labor force in India. And the the economic theory what we normally see from the textbook is the informalization i mean this uh, is normally happening because labor market in the rigid labor market it is happening it is uh, very widespread and 
because of this rigid labor market labor, because of labor market rigidity it induces uh, this rigid uh, labor market induces higher unemployment rate that is what we, we uh, india is facing right now that is what india has been facing in this pandemic situation in the recent time and why and specifically why people are choosing the job let, let us see as i have given in the fig figure that 92 percent of the workforce are engaged as an informal sector employers i'm sorry employees so if this is the case and uh, and the second point says that uh yeah the, big, uh, big, uh, the only 24 percent of the of the of the workers have a contract a contract agreement a contract agreement 24 percent who who uh, 24 percent of the workforce are those who have uh, waste earnings and salaried workers who holds uh, who holds an employment with some kind of employment contract and have a fixed uh, basic remuneration that is some basic uh, basic salary or a fixed salary some certain uh, so, uh, like that so if this yeah i mean in employment in uh, employment uh, sector in employment avenues where informal sector is widespread uh, uh, and un, in the particularly in the unorganized sector where 99 percent of the organized, unorganized sectors are sectors are working uh or, or em, employees are working you know. see here there are no contract there are no uh, fixed basic uh, salary perhaps the that is one of the factors which which is causing informalizations of work as well as uh, people are losing job and the people are just laying off. I mean, employers are just laying off, uh, employers just retrans, laid off the, their workers. I think those are the factors which is explaining the Indian uh, uh, job loss, current job loss, or maybe not necessarily only during this pandemic period, but earlier uh condition uh, situation also pre pandemic condition also perhaps people lose their job because they don't enter the contract so, um, employ uh, um, uh, agreement and all i think i'm short of uh, i'm overshooting time do can, do, can i take some more uh, um, time hello uh sir please proceed sir can I take some more time? I mean, I, I have four or five slides. Yeah, sure, sir. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, let, let's see. Let's see, people lose their job. People lose their job. Now they have lost their job. They may be because of a various factor, which I have explained earlier in, in, in earlier slides. Now, seeking the, uh, seeing the unemployment, uh, uh, I mean, after losing the job, people tend normally tend to re-enter the, the, in the labor market by seeking a new job. So let's see whether, uh, I mean, the, the past trend of unemployment. Unemployment really shot up from 2% to 6% in the, in, uh, from 2001 to 2009, 2001, uh, sorry, 2011, 12, 2018, 19. Unemployment really has shot uh, in India from 2% to 6%. So, and this is more significant in rural areas and for rural females. The, where the labor workforce participation was also uh, lower for females and lower in the rural areas for females. Yeah. Uh, see, this is a uh, labor force participation rate and unemployment. Rate. I, I think this has issues, certain associations. Like people say that uh, labor force participation, declining labor force participation, or the workforce participation among females is because of uh, because females are entering more in the educational contest in higher education enrollment. So that can also explain. But uh, to, uh, to the other surprise is that unemployment rate also shot up. I mean, is a uh, is uh, has increased, and also what we see, what we, what we see in particular, particularly in the urban areas, is unemployment rate is higher for uh, females than males. So that is uh, the, there. There lies certain problems, so certain uh, adjustment problems, uh, like the flexibility in entering the labor market, choosing the, I mean, as, uh, choosing the aspire job, or get, getting difficulty in their job expectation or ways expectation or whether they uh, are having some reservation uh, i mean uh, re uh, whether they are not working below the reservation ways and all i think may, many factors may explain but what we see is that um, in uh, in in india as a whole unemployment has shot up this is uh, up to 2019 
an unemployment problem is always severe in our, our urban areas as uh, when we compare to the rural areas. That is true for both males and females. That is uh, again to do with the labor participation nature in agriculture in rural areas and difficulty in, in getting a waste employment or a formal employment in urban areas. Uh, area. <clears throat> but in, uh, and in our, further in urban areas, the unemployment continues to be more severe for females than males. This, as I have said, this can have a mixed features, like the, maybe because of the uh, light family pressure or poverty or economic compulsions or uh, flexibility in choosing job or acceptance of wage rate. Uh, the rate is very, uh, different uh, for males in comparison with females. So let's see the actual. Uh, Let's say the unemployment crisis, whether we uh, whether this COVID pandemic compared, do we India really face concluding remarks? Really face the unemployment crisis. If you see the trend, uh, the from March 2020, it has shot up, shot up to our, uh, close to 25 percent, uh, 22, 23 percent, yeah, the unemployment rate. And it it's, it, it was uh, it steadily declined maybe maybe uh, from June because of the opening of the uh, gradual opening of the this uh, Indian economy and uh, the permission given uh, lifting of restrictions in the economic uh, you know activities so on so for me explain but in India uh, during the peak of the I mean the beginning of this pandemic situation really the unemployment sort of and unemployment level is still much higher in comparison with pre this uh, <coughs> situations like february before february in, if we compare uh, this uh, august uh, figure then unemployment rate is still higher <coughs> so so what we can see that uh, see, uh, what we can uh, portray is that uh, there is of course certain impact of, of uh, of this COVID-19 pandemics to the labor market in terms of unemployment, which has sought up that, that, that is a result of lockdown led of uh, retrenchment job loss. And as as a consequences, as a as a consequences, uh, people re and try to re attempt to re-enter into the labor market because of that unemployment rate has sought up. In India, in the, across the Indian states, you, um, in this slide, what we see is that the unemployment rate in uh, August 2020, uh, the unemployment rate was, I mean, uh, 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 rel relatively higher in comparison with Indian national average of, of around 6%, particularly in the northern state like Haryana and in the northeastern state like Tripura. In in Kerala, it's, it is around a little more than 10%, and in Karnataka, it's uh, relatively very low. And before I end uh, my presentation, there are, uh, you know, labor market crisis. I mean, it's COVID-19. This is what I wanted to put forward. You know that uh, the there are job loss, of course, because of the job loss, unemployment, and and this unemployment unemployment issue may persist because uh, in the migration uh, in the destination for migration if people does not come back and uh, they are not sure to get back their job maybe they, they might not uh, stay back or they might even further uh, decide to uh, return to their origin migration and of course there are insecurities in the uh, light of to, uh, to commute to the workplace uh, because of that also perhaps the uh, un uh, um, this employment crisis, uh, labor market crisis is very much prevalent because people have, uh, people are more, uh, you know, um, give more preference <clears throat> to health than their economic, I mean, like, if it is, if it, if, if they do not uh, face harsh economic hardship, then people give more uh, to their health because of this pandemic situation is more affecting to the health, unlike the other disaster, other uh, health disaster. And yes, people do uh engage uh, try to engage in the uh, employment so in order to overcome their uh, economic hardships in order to overcome their uh, you know uh, remaining as unemployed people can't afford to remain as unemployed particular uh, forever particularly particularly the uh, uh, lower income family particularly 
who have uh, no uh, yeah, social security, who who have no like uh, savings or or other uh, assistance. So people tend to compromise. This is perhaps maybe true. People may tend to compromise for their ways to for re-entry, re-entering into the labor market, and. For the reverse migrants or for certain sector or section of the people populations who are more most vulnerable, they might be forced to engage in the informal sector, particularly the reverse migrants. And yes, uncertainty is going to be there for a while, particularly for the migrants who try to secure their livelihood. Maybe for for the for the daily uh, for the vulnerable groups like the daily workers and the contractor workers which they which they may compromise certain things there are certain things in terms of ways in terms of workplace in terms of uh, uh, exposure to the disease uh, i mean uh, risk to the uh, pandemic risk risk to the covid situation uh, and in urban centers where the cost of living is uh, there are more expensive than uh, comparing with uh, to the rural areas and where The, the uncertainty is uh, more affecting to the uh, lower profile jobs like as i said you know the most uh, uh, vulnerable groups daily workers who does not have social security uh, and overall the well-being is being suffered the well-being in terms of economic in terms of social in terms of and the uh, you know, psychological is being affected uh, not only the, the my uh, labor uh, market, but also their physical well-being, social well-being is also being affected. So, at last, uh, before I conclude the uh, presentations, we should. India is opening up the economy. Yes, that is very much required, but it should be very cautious. Uh, need to be very prudent and cautious to improve the economy. As I said, you know, we, yes, we know that the economic growth was growing negatively. So perhaps uh, it may not be uh, easy to bring uh, to full employment to the um, to those who are finding uh, unemployment crisis in the present context. Perhaps the government of India may think about uh, like providing or generating certain employment schemes like MNRG in the urban areas for the skilled, uh, skilled, uh, skilled, skilled people. Skill, including the skilled migrants or skilled reverse migrants, you know. and perhaps it may be necessary to strengthen the skill based industrial developments for uh, with the with the employment growth. And lastly, what what we have learned from these uh, COVID pandemic situations in the in the migration phenomena or the uh, which is affecting the migration phenomena or the uh, this labor market is that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it incites, it induces certain uh, policy suggestions that, but uh, one feature if I have discussed in one of the slides that kind of in India, only 24% uh, of the contract uh, people, uh, employees have con contract, uh, formal employees have contract. I mean, the, this has to do with uh, certain uh, for formalizations of employment, for entering contractual agreements or providing some uh, contract agreement, assuring, as, assuring the job that uh, for a certain period of time, that, that job will be uh, for that employee worker or worker like that. You know. And uh, the job loss compensation and employment allowances may be uh, initiated, particularly due, during this uh, such uh, pandemic situations, which may so that their economic hardship may be, may be you know, uh, reduced. And of course, social security benefit schemes may, may be introduced, needs to be introduced uh, for, for, for various employment sector, particularly the informal sectors, which India has a huge chunk of informal sector, 92% of informal sector. So I think uh, by providing uh, some social security benefits, social security schemes, I think this may also ensure the livelihood and, uh, um, and also alleviate the, uh, the economic hardship of the Labor and as a migration policy, I think there needs to be certain registering and monitoring system in India so that uh, the mechanism will 
take care of the uh, situations, can control the situations, unlike in this pandemic situations, which erupts like an, a volcano without uh, we, where we can't even control it. I think some, certain monitoring mechanism may also help to reduce the employment or the labor market situations for the migrants as a well. whole. With this, I conclude my uh, presentation. Thank you all. Anu, Anu, please. Oh. Yeah. That is next. Opening the forum. Yes, sir. Opening for discussion, sir. So I invite the participants uh, for express their own views and questions uh, to Dr. Uh, Marchang, who delivered a very good, very, very uh, research-based uh, presentation. So I think there, ma there are some questions uh, for the participants. One by one, please uh, come forward for the questions. And afterwards, we'll be presenting a concluding remark. Hello, is it audible? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Anu, please coordinate. Sure, sir. Sir, is it, is it audible, sir? Yes, Grace, and please proceed. Yes. Okay, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, you told very much about uh, unemployment problems and uh, uh, recent our uh, COVID pandemic problems, which are affecting our uh, in countries. <coughs> economic stability and systems. Sir, in this system, in this uh, situation, how to say that uh, also I want to know about your personal view on uh, this topic. That means unemployment in our country had been a problem since 2017 and 18. Uh, six, six months of lockdown in India uh, had, has been witnessed sharp decline in the number of jobs. In this situation, the government uh, had been introduced several schemes to promote entrepreneurship in the country, including the flagship Make in India. Prime Minister Modi has on many occasions encouraged India's growth, India's growing youth population to become uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, sir, my question is that how can we uh, made a sustainable development in economic system through promoting entrepreneurship in our country. How will affect our uh, uh, um, regular jobs? That means uh, affect our uh, salarized jo jobs. And what about your views and concern about this thing? Dr. Machan, uh, are you present? And, uh, the, okay, the, the, do I respond? Do I react? Okay. Ah, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, yeah. Under this, uh, I'm, during this hardship period, as he said, the, the lockdown period, number of jobs have reduced. Of course, uh, Government of India has initiated lots of flagship programs, in, yes, you, as you said, Made in India. Made in India is uh, a flagship program is not new. It was there since, uh, uh, I mean, before pandemic also, you know. So um, perhaps it may, it may it, we may need a little more uh, pressure or, I mean, like a big push for Make in India so that we, uh, so that the youth populations will be, uh, you know, enabled to maybe engage as a self-employed people and as an entrepreneur, they can build their uh, we, uh, build build their entrepreneur skills uh, with their accumulated uh, with their uh, knowledge, educational knowledge background, and uh, and all. But in uh, uh, in recently, or in one of the papers in the newspaper clippings, I have come. What I have come across is that uh, in India. People should not be uh, the government of India. The uh, Modi, Modi, uh, he, I think he, I think he, if I'm not mistaken, has said you know, people should not find, uh, try to seek government job. People should not try to linger for government job or long for government job. People should be able to uh, generate job. That is what he meant. That may perhaps, uh, per, perhaps for sustainable employment uh, growth uh, uh, to sustain the 
uh, labor force or to uh, to uh, you know for more employment growth perhaps uh, yes the the people the people the particularly the youth population should come forward to be more entrepreneur in uh, uh, has more jail or encourage to have more jail and to be an entrepreneur not only for self employment but also to uh, generate employment and so that they can cater or they can deliver employment for larger section of populations in india population in india uh, but the but the real pro, but the real problem in india is because of this uh, rigid labor market you know the and because not only because of the waste factor because of the uh, nature of the compositions of the share of the uh, uh, workforce that is the older generations you know the rigid market with older workers so which they carry out till their re retirement you know i think this has to do with uh, this is also affecting the younger younger uh, population labor uh, labor force that's it yes yes very good very good uh, if there is any more uh, interaction Uh, so we have a question in the comment box. Yeah. By. Uh, the by P J Milan Jayas. The question is, what do you what do you think about the government policies regarding the labor and its impact, whether positive or negative, in the current scenario? Is it clear, Doctor Chair? Dr. Okay. Uh, the can, can you specify more or elaborate more on the latter part of the questions? Its impact, whether positive or negative, in the current scenario. What does that mean? I think the question is about the labor policy of NDA. Whether it is positive or negative, uh, okay, approaching. Okay. Approaching the unemployment crisis by uh, making uh, making okay, India okay. program only, only. Okay. Yeah. okay. Please. I think you know. Uh, I think we should uh, we should uh, retrospect back to what our uh, economic survey has once produced in way back in 2014-15, saying that the uh, the no, the the government's policies. Uh, mm, like promoting making India or to generate more employment and also to rely on uh, yeah, our domestic produce. I think on beyond that, the, the, the government also emphasize on exporting, exporting like the leather goods, the peri, uh, uh, like the textile, yes. textile uh, goods, as well as the apparels. These are the three apparels, uh, textiles, and the leather goods. These were the three emphasis which the the government of India met way back, uh, uh, or maybe five six years back. You know, so what I be, what I believe is um, what they believe is uh, through that export, more employment will be generated, and uh, the threat imbalances will be reduced. That is what they believe. What I mean to say is that. If we generate more, uh, if we export more, that means we generate more employment and re revenue. But uh, by by doing that, if we can, uh, if we can, uh, you know, generate more employment, more output, more product, then perhaps the government's uh, p policy might be in the right direction. But that is not happening in Indian context, you know, uh, in India in, uh, in this current situation, because our export is not up to the mark. As, uh, as a, uh, in comparison with the, you know, with the other, uh, you know, uh, exporting giant uh, uh, countries like even even like China or, you know, so I think the garm the garm uh, the the product need to be, uh, I mean, the output need to have a big push as I said earlier, you know, to generate more employment and it has to motivate the younger populations to. Come out with uh, entrepreneurship. Come out with uh, a new idea of employment generations, and to uh, to to reduce unemployment problem. Unemployment problem. I think this has to 
I mean, the nature of our seeking employment, the nature of seeking employment, like the, particularly the educated aspiring for the formal job. I think this is one thing which will, con which may prevail for a while, uh, and which will be a problem in the labor market for a while. Thank you. Very good answer. Uh, I'll attend the answer. And any more? Can you some question in the? Anu? Uh, sir, so, uh, I think there's no more questions. We can proceed with the conclusion. No more questions. <laughs> yes, dear friends, uh, uh, I'm very happy to conclude the program by uh, making a few comments. So, uh, when we are uh, attending a talk, we will be expecting some uh, new things. but. This uh, was not a, not a dollar talk, but a very good research presentation. He included so many facts and figures in the presentation also, as well as he argued uh, some points and uh, proved it uh, uh, that it is his opinion that is valid uh, in the current scenario of the COVID pandemic situation, uh, while the labor market uh, problems are concerned. See, he was uh, starting from the uh, very basic of the migration theories. He explained the uh, various streams of migration, pattern of migration, then structure of migration, and even the reasons for uh, migration. He argued that uh, uh, the wage differences existing in Indian sectors, in urban, rural, or in construction itself, there are uh, differences in wages, and that attracted uh, the most migrant, most of the migrants uh, to various places. Uh, the uh, stream of uh, uh, migration, rural to rural, urban to rural, uh, rural to urban, like that. The process of migration were well explained by the uh, uh, presenter, and I appreciate uh, his way of presentation also. He even talked about the workforce participation uh, differences in rural and urban, and he explained the reasons uh, in a lucid manner uh, for the information of the participants. And I think he argued the uh, job loss process due to the COVID situation. And before that, he explained uh, how the COVID situation created a crisis in the labor market of uh, our economy. The so, so shortage in supply of labor, shortage in demand for labor uh, forced the migrants to uh, return to their own uh, places. That reverse migration, that reverse migration caused the, the crisis uh, in the labor market. So the supply demand clearance was uh, not possible during the last uh, uh, seven or eight months. And he explained it very well with the supporting evidences also. And uh, uh, in the concluding part of the presentation, he put forward some uh, suggestions also. So, uh, he was uh, stressing the point of uh, uh, the vulnerable conditions of the poor daily wage workers who does not uh, have social security or uh, job uh, protection facilities in India. So, unemployment crisis uh, uh, can be sold only by fully opening the economy, uh, which should be done cautiously. It was his opinion uh, in the presentation. And he uh, is uh, saying that uh, government should introduce some, uh, some schemes uh, for uh, uh, employment generation uh, uh, in India immediately. Uh, at the same time, uh, some job loss uh, compensation that's a good idea. Uh, he uh, novelly uh, explained that some jobless compensation schemes are to be announced immediately by the government. And uh, along with that, some social security benefit schemes uh, for the uh, casual workers uh, also to be introduced immediately for uh, meeting with the pandemic situation and the loss of uh, income among the uh, uh, 
poor uh, unorganized laborers. Uh, and he have uh, explained the uh, problems raised, the questions raised uh, along with, uh, after this presentation. And I appreciate uh, the way uh, uh, Dr. Merchant presented the uh, very important uh, topic in our uh, lecture series. Uh, I think uh, that will be enough for the time being and uh, uh, I have to appreciate the uh, endeavor of the Department of Economics of uh, uh, Bartama College Tiruvalla for uh, uh, conducting such a, a, a seminar series which they are uh, regularly conducting in every year and uh, I appreciate uh, 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 Dr. Reji Matthew uh, Chodi uh, Anup Aravind are uh, the coordinators of this uh, uh, seminar and uh, uh, I congratulate uh, Dr. Vargis Matthew, the principal of Marthama College for uh, the uh, successful conduct of these type of uh, webinar series and uh, uh, I am uh, indebted to the organizers for uh, inviting me as a uh, moderator in this seminar and uh, I express my gratitude to uh, all the uh, members of the Department of Economics, uh, uh, Marthama College. Uh, thank you, Anup. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anup, over to over to Anup. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, let me take time to propose the water. Thank you, sir. Now I invite Anup. Now, I invite Anup Koshi George, Assistant Professor and Program Coordinator, to propose vote of thanks. Uh, be before moving on with the vote of thanks, let me mention something for the participants. The feedback link is provided in the comment box. Please take time to fill that form. Okay. Respected resource person for the day, Dr. Virchen Gremming. Moderator, respected Dr. V. Prakash. Respected Principal of the College, Dr. Vogis Matthew. Respected teachers, researchers, and dear students, good afternoon all. We are here in the final moments of the first edition of the online national lecture series organized by the Department of Economics, Parthama College, Tirvela. This is a proud occasion for the department and all those who are associated with us for the successful conduct of this program. I could proudly say that we are able to accomplish the goal we envisaged through this program. The event is meant to be a platform to listen to and learn from scholars in different areas in economics about the impact of COVID-19 on macroeconomic variables. We are very much glad that, by the grace of God Almighty, we are able to give the best to the community who supported us through their participation. Before moving on to the responsibility given to me to propose word of thanks as a coordinator of the program, let me summarize the proceedings of the event. On the first day, we had the lecture on the Kerala Economic Initiative during the COVID pandemic, a description and analysis by none other than the Vice Chairman of Kerala State Planning Board, Dr. P.K. Ramachandran, sir. So gave an elaborate and informative description and analysis of the economic initiatives of Kerala and the initiative impacts of the initiatives taken. On the second day, we had lecture by Dr. Suresh Babu M., Professor IIT Chennai, who is a scholar in the field of macroeconomics. His explanation gave us insight into the policy initiatives needed in this uncertain time. And today, we have the lecture by Dr. Merchant Birmingham, who has many studies and writings in the area of migration and labor market, particularly with reference to the northeastern region of the country. The topic he dealt today is the most rele relevant one and has a large implication. So in his lecture, he me mentioned about the importance of having an effective migrant policy and also he briefed about the issue of reverse migration that happened with the COVID-19. I take this opportunity to th thank each of these resource persons, especially Dr. Merchant Remy, who shared his valuable time and thought with us for, through his, this lecture. On the behalf of the Department of Economics and everyone here, I express our sincere gratitude. Thank you, sir. These events would not have been successful without the involvement and cooperation of moderators. We are so honored by the presence and participation of seasoned academicians 
such as Dr. Abraham George, Dr. P. J. Philip, and Dr. V. Prakash as the moderators of this lecture series. I take this time to thank each one of them, especially Dr. V. Prakash sir, who is with us today. Being a learned academic in the area of migration, sir, your presence and words are very valuable. Thank you, sir. I express our sincere gratitude to Dr. Vogus Matthew, you. the principal of the college, for all his support, guidance, and motivation. Thank you, sir. I also thank Dr. I. C. K. John, former principal of the college and former HOD of the department. For his wholehearted support and cooperation, without his words of motivation, this event would not have happened. Thank you, sir. We are so privileged to have so many academic experts, including retired and present teachers, heads of departments of various colleges, postdoctoral fellows, research scholars, as participants all throughout these days. Thank you all for sharing your valuable time with us. I take this time to thank them all in person. I also thank all faculty members of the college, especially Dr. Ajesh K. Sakriya, who provided technical advices, and also Lieutenant Professor Raisin Samraju for his support. And also all the faculty members of the department, especially the head of the department, Professor Reggie Matthew, and all other faculty members for their wholehearted support and cooperation in the conduct of this program. I thank Mr. G. Tom G. Thomas George, Ms. Archana S. and Ms. Sona Marin, students of the department who accompanied the program in each of these days. Finally, thank you all dear participants, particularly the students of the department and all those who have joined with us from different parts of the country and abroad. Thank you all for joining with us. Without the, your participation, the program would have been meaningless. Let me conclude my words with a request to continue supporting us in all our endeavors. Thank you all once again. We have come to the post of the program. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And I thank each and every one of you for being a part of the virtual lecture series. We hope the series was informative and career exceeding. Once again, I thank you all on the behalf of Economics Department, Markama College, Tirvala. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Anu. Well conducted thank program. Th Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Merchant. Welcome. Thank you, thank much. You too. Thank you for inviting me. Welcome, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, your presentation was good, uh, extremely good, and uh, it was uh, packed with informations and uh, a new introduction, new new idea, new new introduction of new ideas also came out of that uh, about the reverse migration as well as the post-COVID activities that should be initiated by the state and central governments. Say, uh, job loss compensation is a very good idea that should be propagated. Thank okay, you sir, for thank your you. Congrats, congrats, very good. Thank you. Okay, see you signing off. Thank you, sir. You. Thank you so much. Where do I sign out? <laughs> Just click the phone button, sir. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah.